pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I see. understand. A figure walking through the mist with a rifle in his hand. His clothes were torn and dirty as he stood there by the bed. He took off his three-cornered hat and speaking low, he said, We fought a revolution to secure your liberty. We wrote the Constitution as a shield from tyranny. 
For future generations, this legacy we gave to make you the land of the free and home of the brave. The freedoms we secured for you, we thought you'd always keep. But tyrants labor endlessly. While your parents were asleep, now your freedom's gone. Your courage is lost. You're no more than a slave in your land of the free and home of the brave. You buy permits to travel, permits to own a gun, permits to start a business or build a place for one. On land you think you own, you pay your yearly rent, but you don't have a voice in saying how that money's spent. Now your children attend a school that doesn't educate, and your Christian values can't be taught according to the state. You read about your current news in a regulated press and pay more taxes than you owe to that thing called IRS. Your money's no longer made of silver or of gold. You trade your wealth for paper so your life can be controlled. And you pay for crimes that make your nation turn from God in shame. And now you've taken Satan's number and traded in your name. You give your government control to those who could do you harm so they could padlock churches and steal the family farm and keep the nation deep in debt while putting men of faith in jail and then harass your fellow countrymen while your corrupt courts prevail. Your public servants don't uphold the solemn oath they've sworn. And now your daughters visit doctors so their children won't be born. You send guns and artillery to foreign shore and then you send your youth to slaughter, fighting other people's wars. Could you regain the freedoms for which we fought and died? Or have you lost your courage and your faith to stand with pride? Are there no more values for which you'd fight to save? Or do you wish your children to live in fear and be a slave? Then people of this republic, it's time to rise and take a stand. Defend the Constitution, the supreme law of your land. Preserve your great republic and every God-given right. And let us pray to God to keep that torch of freedom burning bright. As I awoke, he vanished. In the mist from which he came. His words were true. We are not free. We have ourselves to blame. For even now as tyrants trample each God-given right, we only watch and tremble, too afraid to stand and fight. If you stood by your bedside in a dream while you're asleep and wondered what remains of our rights he fought to keep, what would be your answer if he called out from the grave? Is this still the land of the free and the home of the brave? A lot of people ask me why I wear this flag It's because of the burden upon my back The uncommon valor that paid for this land Wasn't fought for by just the common man I wear the flag for all of those who died For the homeless men who's tried to I wear it for the reasons that keep our country free And for God's grace, peace and liberty The stars are for the mothers of the sons Who sacrificed their freedom one by one And for the children who go to face the wall May your dad be there in spirit when you fall. Raise for the blood that has been lost. Raise for the sadness that it calls. White is for the brighter and the lighter days to come. When the war inside of me is finally won. When I walk among the brave at Arlington 
And talk about the battles that's been won I'm your hometown vet You, you may, may think, think I brag But the truth is I'm proud to wear this flag I wear the flag for all of those oppressed For the vets who wear those medals on their chest You may wonder why I'd rather be alone Cause no one's ever told me welcome home The stars are for the mothers of the sons Who sacrificed their freedom one by one And for the children who go to face the wall May your dad be there in spirit when you the red is for the blood that has been lost Blue is for the sadness that it caused White is for the brighter and the lighter days to come When the war inside of me is finally won 9-11 really brought us to our knees at least for a while, so it seems And I wonder why we don't all feel the same Until our blood is falling like the rain The stars are for the mothers of the sons Who sacrificed their freedom one by one And for the children who go to face the wall May your dad be there in spirit when you fall The red is for the blood that has been lost Blue is for the sadness that it caused White is for the brighter and the lighter days to come When the war inside of me is finally won each night I get down on my knees to pray For our lost P.O.W.s and M.I.A.s When I get to heaven I may be wearing rags But until then I'll proudly wear this flag Yeah, until then I'll proudly wear this flag Gentlemen and ladies, I consider it a great honor to stand before you today to celebrate 244 years of our marvelous nation's history. When you look at America today, we come to the same conclusion. We did not grow up in the country like it is now. But this is a salute to you and your families and all of those who gave their life in the struggle of our history and our freedoms. When I see this flag, words like this come to me. Here's to the red of it. There's not a thread of it, nor the spread of it, and all the sh shed of it. But heroes bled for it, faced steel and lead for it, tons of blood was shed for it, bathed this flag in, in blood. Here's to the white of it, I love the sight of it, but who knows the right of it, yet feels the might of it day and night. Womanhood cared for it, made manhood dare for it, patriots prayers for it, to keep it pure white. Now here's to the blue of it. Beautiful view of it, heavenly hue of it, star-spangled do of it, constant and true. Diadems gleam for it, states stand supreme for it, liberty beams for it, brightens the blue. 
Here's the whole of it, the star stripe and pole of it, the body and soul of it, and all the roll of it when the sun shines through. Arch of the core for it, swear by the sword for it, and I'm thanking my Lord for it, the red, white, and blue. Remember me, America, I was once your son. I fought and died at Valley Forge with General Washington. I was there again at Gettysburg on a tragic, tragic day when brother fought brother, the blue against the gray. I was with Teddy Roosevelt. <clears throat> a charge up San Juan Hill. Some came to fight there and some lay there still. On D-Day, June 6, 1944, we stormed the beaches of Normandy. We fought uphill every inch of the way. We routed those Germans. We pushed them back, but look at the price we had to pay. I heard the CO say one night in Korea, we could take it, I know we will. So I died again at a place they named Pork Chop Hill. Vietnam, Vietnam. When will we ever learn of one of many thousands who never did return? I left my town, my wife, my kids, my home so dear and warm and died again in a scud attack in a place called Desert Storm. But now my blood's all over Afghanistan and I die every day in Iraq. And I wonder how many Americans care if I ever make it back. But in my eternity, my thoughts will go to thee. I will not forget you, America. America, please don't forget me. I'm here to remember so many in our history who gave their all. This another 4th of July, gentlemen, is courtesy of many of you and your buddies and your families and millions of heroes across this country, men and women who gave up all of their yesterdays for every today that we still have. I'm here to say thank you. I'm here to salute your service and your love of America. Back in 2004, I had the honor of traveling to Afghanistan after I had served with Bob Howard in the Airborne Rangers. But while in Afghanistan on the 4th of July, I wanted to uh, give the brigade of troops in front of me something most of us have never heard. I don't know how many military funerals you've had the honor and I've had the honor to visit. But if you notice, every time they have one, they professionally fold the flag 13 times. Each fold represents something of our history. What makes America what America really is. And so I want to give these folds to you. And I don't know if any of you out there want to write this down, but it's good to know. It gives meaning to the ritual of folding a flag to honor the one who's there and who gave their all. Fold number one stands for human life. I have a hard time believing that in America today, our attitude toward human life or the unborn child is no longer honorable. The second fold stands for eternal life. You see, we are a mind, body, a social person. And so part of that, of who we are, represents the keys to eternal life. You see, your soul and my soul will never die. Eternal life really belongs to all of us, even though some will not call it eternal life. 
But I'm going to come back to that because I want to make it very clear because it's the most important information that I could give today in honor of all of you. Number three of the fold stands for America. Where would the world be if there was no United States of America? How much freedom would there still be on this planet if God didn't give us America the key to freedom that it must be paid for over and over again? How many have left our shores to defend freedom around the world, and obviously most of them never really appreciate it. How can we forget the price of freedom? Well, in the word America, it summarizes all of that. We are a nation that is motivated by the spirit of God and the reality of freedom. America. Fold number four stands for courage. We're the land of the free only because we live in a home of the brave. I'm not talking about emotional courage. I'm talking about the convictions of our life that motivate us to go the distance, to give our best, and never look around to see if anybody's thankful for it. We don't do it under mankind. We do it under God who gave us this, this freedom and gave America what it happens to be. Well, let me tell you this, guys. This is a great opportunity here right at the 4th of July. But we're a group called Homeland, and I want to introduce, this is Ed Jones on my left, Boy Smith on my right, I'm Larry Tidwell, and what an honor and privilege to be able to sing to you veterans, especially you guys that are there in the facilities of the VA in, in, in Pell City, uh, the ones that are in the assisted living and in the nursing home. What an honor to be a part of you celebrating the freedom that you served our country for. We're going to do a song for all the Vietnam veterans right now. Um, that was one of the things that we did many years ago. We've been together a long time. And the Vietnam veterans was one of those groups that I had a burden in my soul for because they were so mistreated, misunderstood. And this is a song written by Ed Jones. Uh, if I had enough time, I would tell you the background of the song. But we were singing at the Vietnam Wall in Washington, D.C. And Ed Jones wrote this song. He had just gone see a movie, We Were Soldiers. But anyhow, he penned these words and music and all that, and... So this is a tribute. This is one of my favorite Vietnam songs because I really think it's truthful about what the American people thought about the war is what was projected from all the news medias. And we just did not understand. So here we go. I recall the day I stood in front of that black wall in D.C. I can still see the tears in the eyes of that lonely vet down on his knees. Staring through the granite, he saw something I could not. As he traced back the memories of his lost brothers In that political war they fought It was 69 in a Shaw Valley The V.C. were closing fast 
First Lieutenant Bruce King wrote a letter to his mom and dad Knowing it would be his last He said he chose to serve his country proud And gave his life in a foreign land While at home we chose to turn our backs Cause we did not understand Why did we take for granted Those names upon that wall Why did we leave behind Our sons and dads Who answered our country's call Why did we only welcome home Those who turned and ran These words are true, what you went through, we did not understand. I can't share the load you carry, nor bear the pain you feel. Cause I wasn't there at My Lai or Docktown, where your wounds have never healed. You saw the horror of those oppressed But you still went in As the politicians compromised They would not let you win A lot of years have come and gone Since the days of Vietnam and I pray you'll find a place in your heart to forgive us if you can. And as long as God gives me a voice to sing, your courage will be known. And I'd like to thank you for what you gave. And most of all, welcome home. Why did we take those names upon that wall Why did we leave behind Our sons and dads Who answered our country's call Why did we only welcome home Those who turned and ran These words are true What you went through but I know our Lord in heaven understands your pain When He fought for us on that lonely cross We turned our backs the same Why did we take for granted those names upon that wall Why did we leave behind Our sons and dads Who answered our country's call Why did we only welcome home Those who turned and ran but These words are true What you went through Understand. All these words are true. What you went through, we did not understand. Fold number five stands for liberty, the concept of freedom itself, which is never free. So often growing up, we think freedom is doing what we want to do when we want to do it. That's not freedom. That's temporary slavery. If you want freedom, 
You must know the source, which is always spiritual. Not national or personal, but spiritual. Six, our hearts. Whether we pledge allegiance to it this way or in the spirit of our mind, because the real heart of man is not in the chest. It's in the soul. And God tells us, guard your heart, because out of it are the issues of life. I could never understand why patriots who joined the United States military raised their hand in devotion to the cause and yet run out one day on their families, divorced their wives, and now the statistics are unbelievable. Over 75% of the marriages in this country have crashed and burned. But if you'd be loyal on a battlefield, why not in your home? That's where freedom manifests itself the best. Look at the children that are misguided. Look at the riots. Look at the pillage. Look at the arrogance of the generation of kids. In many cases, can never understand the stability of a marriage. Because that's what saves a nation. Seven stands for the armed forces. The Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, Air Force, Coast Guard, Merchant Marines, firefighters, police officers, look where we are today with regards to the police. They're underpaid, they're overworked, and now when something goes wrong, we want to get rid of them. They're a part of our freedom here in our homes and streets. Sure, we have to be careful. We are human beings. We have sin natures. Sometimes we forget our priorities. But you notice that when there's a, a killing, they never tell you about the person's life that was shot, the violence they represent, the crime that they lived with their life. It's always how bad it is that the police had to shoot somebody. Eight is the mothers who bear the young. And so many of the single mothers today with children because of the deadbeat dads that will not stand and be loyal in the home. How can you be loyal on a battlefield when you're not loyal to your family here at home? Nine is the family, the foundation of a nation. The family is the strength of our country. And once the family begins to break up, the next generation of kids will suffer. And we have arrived at a very dangerous place in our history right now because of the lack of stability in marriage. Yeah, we don't want to talk about God's standard for the family. God's rules for marriage. Shame on us. Ten is liberty and justice for all. If you have liberty without justice, you have total chaos. If you have justice without Liberty, you have tyranny. They have to balance each other out. And a strong, honorable nation understands the value of both. Twelve folds is eternity. The second fold was eternal life. But whether you and I have eternal life is another question. When you see the stars, 
and the sky and the colors of the flag. You're looking at fold number 12, eternity. Okay, guys, we're going to do a song that is a tribute. I say guys and gals. I know there's some gals out there. We're going to do a tribute to all the men and women who served this great country. We salute you all. And what we want you to do, whatever branch of service you were in, this is a tribute to you for serving this great nation. God bless each and every one of you. Here we go.
please, my friends, you dear warriors, you patriots, you, you gentlemen and ladies who have given so much, I want to explain the most important part of the ceremony of the folding of the flags. For God, the greatest initiator, so loved the greatest compassion, the world, the greatest number, that he gave the greatest act. His only begotten son, the greatest gift. That whosoever, <clears throat> the greatest endurance, believes the greatest simplicity, in him, the greatest person, shall never perish, the greatest delivery, but the greatest contrast, have the greatest certainty, everlasting life. I want to make it clear. When you open the scriptures, God wants you to understand, first of all, that without a relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith alone, you will never understand the plan of God. You will never be able to understand the scriptures, the Bible itself. You must know the author. You must have within you the gift of the Holy Spirit, which enables us to interpret what is God trying to say. Because, my friend, it's not a book. It's a man. In John chapter 1, it says, And the Word became flesh. Who was that? Jesus Christ. You want to know what God thinks? You want to know what Jesus Christ planned for your life? You must spend time daily in the Word of God. It's your compass. It's your guide. It's your map. It's how to define your destiny. Because my friend, when Jesus came, he was rejected of his own. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called the children of God. I am so blessed today to be called a child of Almighty God. But what did I do to get that? Nothing but believe. All the religions of the world has gimmicks. All of them say you must do this, you must do that in order to live in heaven one day. My friend, it's a lie. I'll tell you what you must do. You must be willing to believe that God sent Jesus Christ to this earth to give you and me the greatest gift that man could ever receive. You see, while he was on the cross, innocent, he never sinned. He was not a criminal. But God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It's a gift. If a gift has strings attached, if you have to pay for it, if you have to uh, keep a whole bunch of rules and regulations, it's not a gift. The only thing you can do when someone offers you a gift is either receive it or reject it. In Ephesians chapter 2 it says, For by grace, what is grace? It's God's way of giving things to us that we never deserve. For by grace we're saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's a gift. Not by means of works. That's anyone brag. You cannot earn salvation. You must just receive it. It's already been earned. It's already been collected. It's already been paid. When Jesus Christ hung on Calvary's tree for six hours. From 12 o'clock, that terrible day, it became midnight, and all you could do was not see him, but you could hear him, and that's when he says, dear God, oh God, why have you forsaken me? I'll tell you why, because God could not look on sin, because this was his son now. His son was not the righteous one he sent. He was the bearer of your sins and mine, and all of our sins. Your sins, my friend, have been already paid for, past, present, and future. And if you can believe that, if you can accept the reality of that, if you can actually speak to Almighty God and say, I accept what your son did for me on that, on that cross when he paid the debt of my sin, past, present, and future. At 3 p.m. he bowed his head. He said, Telestai, 
In the ancient world, the telestai meant the debt had been canceled. Your debt has been paid. Past, present, and future. The question is this, do you believe it? Do you receive that gift? Are you humble enough to say to God, yes, dear God, I am a sinner. But thank you that Jesus Christ, your perfect righteous son, came and solved my sinful problem. And when you believe this, why do you think they took him off of that cross and put him in a rich man's grave? I always wonder when Joseph of Arimathea went to the officials and said, can I have the body? And they said, why, why, why do you want to put a criminal in your very special tomb? He could have said, oy vey, it's only for the weekend. If Jesus Christ is the key to eternal life, he can't be dead. He was laid in that tomb for three days. He opened his eyes and walked through the stone. He is alive forevermore. He's the only man in history that conquered sin, death, and hell for you and me. You hear me? We fought the British Redcoats, Sir Washington with pride. We marched with Grant and yes with Lee and fell at Custer's side. We made a charge up San Juan Hill. We held the Alamo, a mounting threat to world peace. They called us to go. We lost tons of blood in World War I and II in desert sand and jungle trees. They pulled us from the burning wreckage and buried us at sea. At Korea's 38th parallel, we fought amidst the sham. We left our loved ones, took up arms, and died in Vietnam. On every kind of battlefield, desert sand and jungle marsh, I've seen brave soldiers give their lives in conditions brutal and harsh. I've viewed the bombed-out cities. I mourned for all that was lost. I pondered in my saddest hour, what could warrant such a human cost? The answer, of course, is freedom. Freedom defines the job I do. I volunteer, I've called, I serve on freedom's maintenance crew, whether career or citizen soldier. I serve the highest plan. They call it duty, honor, God, and country. Because I represent the American fighting man. And I represent all of you and your memories and your pains and your life. I served some wonderful years with Colonel Bob Howard. And I love the fact that this building and your home now is named in honor of him. But my friend, I'm hoping that before this day is out, you will make things straight between you and your Lord. Do it today. None of us know that we have another tomorrow. There's not a religious bone in my body. It's not religion. It's a relationship of the greatest unity that man could ever have to be on this sinful earth with the Son of God's Spirit inside our being. And if you have him, you'll never die. And I thank you, all of you here, for this wonderful honor and privilege to be a part of celebrating another birthday in our wonderful, wonderful America. Thank you, and let us pray that God continues to bless America and that we can still survive as one nation under God, indivisible. In the name of my Lord, the greatest warrior in history, I close by saluting you, your family, your faith, and your life. May God bless America. Thank you very much.